In today's video, we're going to take one masterboard and turn it into multiple mixed media makes. So here's the masterboard, and I'll put a link to the video where I show how I created this masterboard. So out of that one 11 by 17 masterboard, I'm going to make six pieces, mixed media pieces. One 7 by 10 art journal page, but you could do an 8 by 10 canvas. A 6 by 6 wood panel. Two 4 by 4 magnets. One mini composition book. And a gift tag to go along with a gift of coffee. Grab a coffee, pull up a chair, and let's get creative. So when I start with a master board, the first cut is the hardest. I absolutely love this background, but we need to use it. So I measure out the six by six mixed media board wood panel and that I'm going to glue onto this six by six wood panel. Now because the paper's thicker, I'm going to use gel medium and I put it on fairly thickly because I want it to really stick. And I put some gel medium, TCW gel medium, on the back of the paper as well. I find that it just adheres better when you really want to get a good seal. Using the brayer gets out all the air bubbles and I go around and I check to make sure that it's all perfectly adhered around the edges. And I'm just using the X-Acto knife once this dries just to trim off any of the excess. I'm pressing down the brayer, just making sure. Now, I notice that I can get a mini composition book with this piece that's here. So I decide I'm just going to put it on onto the mini composition book. Again, I'm using the brayer, I'm using gel medium. The process is the same to adhere this paper, this beautiful master board onto all of them. I select which one I want for the cover, use the brayer to press down, cut off the excess. And before I go and do any other parts of this, I'm going to make sure that this dries. I also put a coat of the gel medium on top. That just seems to help the seal. Now with the rest over piece, I'm going to make this 7 by 10 art journal page. So I'm figuring out and, and I notice that, oh, there's a four inch span here. That's perfect for those four by four mixed media boards or canvas. These happen to be magnetics. So I'm measuring out four inches here. So usually from 11 by 17, I'm getting two bigger pieces and then some of those smaller ones. Magnets or those composition books are a great way to use up the littler pieces. So I'm just cutting these four by fours. And then I'm going to use my TCW gel medium. It's the matte finish. Put some on the paper, on the substrate, and then on the back of the paper, and then use the brayer to press it down and get good adhesion, checking the edges. And cutting off excess. Now, there's nothing saying that you have to do all the projects from one master board at the same time. I'm doing it for the video, but you could just do one piece and the rest of it can stay in your stash till you're ready to use it. 
I'm putting a coat of gel medium on the top. as well. And then letting all these pieces dry completely. So now right now I'm going to work on the 7x10 art journal page. I grab a sentiment from my soon to be released sentiment pack, grateful, thankful, blessed, and I picked a font that from the sentiment that goes with this vintage old world background that I have going here. And I grabbed this etched coneflower, daisy, unnamed flower. And I had printed that off and sized it for the size of the page. I could have made this smaller if it was on a smaller substrate. Now I'm playing with the sentiment and I'm cutting off some of the excess. I start with the whole thing and see if it fits. And that's the benefit of using the sentiments. You can use them in a multitude of ways, tweaking it to fit your composition and the size of your make. I wanted to see a lot of that background, so I wanted to cut out a lot of the white. So once again, I'm using the gel medium to glue everything down. I'm kind of moving the sentiment around, kind of stepping it out instead of trying to make it perfectly lined up. This hides if it's not perfectly lined up. Now this master board, I completely love. It was a done deal. I didn't have to add anything to it at all. But it was rather busy, so I am choosing to keep the focal images fairly plain. Now there was a little bit of I was a little short with the the cut paper, so I'm just colorizing it. You can put some gesso on, some paint, and just tweak the colors a little bit. Fill in those white spaces if it bothers you. Sometimes you have a not quite, you might even have a centimeter around. You can just paint that edge out the same colors that you have. Now I'm using unbleached titanium, white gesso, and a little bit of the Naples yellow, and I'm painting this flower out. I don't want to get rid of the, the sketchy lines. And I'm doing going very painterly. Inside, I'm using the Naples yellow because I want to bring that out from what's in my background. I really am kind of globbing on the paint. It's adding texture to the petals. And then I'm just adding different colors at different times, adding more white gesso, and that's giving some highlights, and then adding other colors. And I come back and I'm going to be shading this as well. So I'm still adding more on here. This is just adding dimension, adding texture to the petals and making it my own. The sketch that was underneath was just the guide. So you could use a napkin, a free printable, or a sketch that you've drawn. Now I'm using the burnt sienna, that's that reddish brown in the background, and adding that to the center of the flower as well. I want it to tie in with the background. And then I'm doing a little bit of shading with brown. And I'm using my angle brush and I'm using my shading technique. It's called floating acrylic. And if you Google that or you search it on my YouTube channel, if you type in shading or floating acrylic, you'll get the video tutorial on how to do that.
Now I'm shading around the outside edges with black. There is a lot of black in that background and I wanna frame this page. Now, just because I've done this on an art journal page, if you wanted to do something similar, you don't have to do it on an art journal page. You can do it on a canvas, on a wood panel. You pick the substrate. This could even go on a uh, cover of a book. Now, I'm using my General's charcoal pencil with a very, I'm holding it loosely, and I'm kind of sketching around the flower. Smudging a little bit to shade. I just like the sketchy effect of it. And then I'm adding a little smudging around the sentiment as well. Just to make it look more vintage to go in with the background. I'm using the heat tool to release the tape. This has been on here for many, many, many days. And it did rip up a little bit, but... If you take the time, you should do a much better job than I did. So moving along to the four by four or six by six wood panel, I loved it, but this time, because the background's busy, I'm going with black and I'm using TCW black modeling paste. I'm applying it with a key card through this cypress tree stencil. So I'm going for a silhouette and I love the way that looks. Then I set that aside and make sure it dries and you're going to want to clean your stencil. I rub off the excess and actually I got another whole print with it. Now I'm going to put some letters on here, but it's so busy, I need to knock back some of that background. And I'm going to use my wood stamps and stamp out roots and wings with black acrylic paint. And that's what was on that palette board. Because I knocked it back, we can now make out these letters very well. Because everything underneath is Permanent, when I made a mistake, I can erase it with a baby wipe and get the exact placement. I decided to put the butterfly over the root, the roots of the tree, and I went with the sentiment roots and wings. I don't really attempt to get this perfectly straight. I embrace it. I wanted to add a little bit of color over here with that. So I put the stencil that I used in the master board and just adding a little bit more detail and color where I want it. You can always tweak the colors. Gluing things down, the butterfly down with the gel medium and making sure that it is completely dry. Now that butterfly is a little bit more faded, so I'm grabbing my Prussian blue and adding some blue to the background, and then I'm doing a bit of a wash over the butterfly just to make it a little bit brighter than it is to tie in with the background. And then I'm adding some of the blue into the background as well. Remember, the master board is just the start. You may add a little bit or keep it as it is. I'm painting the edges of this wood panel black, and that black is also going to be used to frame the outside edge. And here I'm going to use the shading technique to get that softer edge. And I'm shading a little bit around the butterfly as well to make it pop.
I'm using my Posca pen, my black, just adding a little bit more, making it a little bit more opaque, the black lettering. Just because I want it to stand out a little bit more. Be sure at the end of this video to go and leave a comment and let me know which of the makes is your favorite from this master board. And since it's a craft fair item to sell, I signed it. Now these magnets, I'm just cutting off the excess now that it's completely dry. And I'll make sure that everything is perfectly adhered, adding some glue, gel medium, if necessary. I'll put some canvas boards and some magnet sheets in the description box links. This is a brand new TCW stencil. It's called Steamy Cups and it's one of their sign stencils, but you don't have to use it for signs. And so I'm getting some collage papers, blue, because there's that little bit of blue in the background and I want to tie in. And I thought I'd go with the a yellow as well, because that's in the background. And I'm stenciling with black acrylic paint through there. And then I'm going to cut out these cups. I'm using X Acto knife to cut out the part that's this part. And then I use scissors for the rest. I edge it with the black acrylic paint on a makeup sponge just to get rid of the white. And then I'm testing it out. And the yellow, light yellow one cup, it's not standing out quite enough. I go to my coffee or tea sentiment pack and I cut out, choose a couple sentiments on there. These are great for craft fair makes. And all my sentiment packs are available at Ninny's Napkins. There's a link to them in the description box. Now I went and since I didn't like the yellow cup, I found another blue paper. This one was on a coffee filter. And I'm using, I'm going to make two blue, blue cups. This time I'm grabbing my fluid matte medium. These papers are very light, so you can get by easier with the, with the fluid medium. And gluing the sentiments down. If one says, of course size matter, who wants a small coffee? These make perfect gifts for the coffee lover. This one says, I love you more than coffee, but not before coffee, or something like that. We'll see in the close-ups at the end of the video. Love how the blue really pops. I could have used red, but there was a lot of red in the background. And then I'm adding some shading on the outside and on top of the cups and the plate, just to add, give it a little bit more dimension. the shading, the outlining, that all makes such a big difference to your finished project. If you're not happy with your projects, maybe look at how you're finishing. Sometimes that's what really bumps it up. I'm using a stylus and I'm dipping into gold paint to 
add a little contrast to the cups. There's gold in the background and I want to tie in. I'm using my Secura glaze pen and outlining this sentiment. This is dimensional and glossy. I'm also adding a few lines on the cup. They will shine and have a little bit of dimension. And then I'm edging this one. And that just frames it. Now I forgot that it's better to paint the canvas black around the edge before you glue the background papers on. This is one of the Crazy Birds, Tim Holt Crazy Birds. And I'm painting it blue to go on this mini composition book. I'm sticking with the color theme that's already there. Adding some And it's not Naples yellow, yellow oxide paint for the beak. Again, that ties in with what's in the back and then gluing it down with gel medium. And adding a sentiment from, I'm not sure which of my sentiment packs. It says, hold on, let me overthink this. Hands up if you ever do, have done that when you're working on an art journal or mixed media piece. Definitely I have. Adding some shading. Creating a master board and then using it for a multitude of projects really saves time. And when you're doing a master board, you're not really thinking about the end composition. So you're a little more free and sometimes you end up with a masterpiece. That's what I think this master board was. It was so absolutely beautiful. I'm just shading the background or the back page of this composition book. Now these are the pieces that are left. And I decide, you know what? I'm going to make a gift tag with that last little piece. I grab a tag here and I'm painting it black to frame the little piece of master board. Just cutting it to size. Now I was going to leave the burnt sienna circle reinforcement there and then I chose to paint it out because I didn't I really didn't like it. Didn't want it to take away from the focal image. And I have that cup that yellow cup that I didn't use, I painted it gold to deepen the color. And I'm just going to put it on this tag. And this tag will go with a, a pound of flavored coffee as a gift, or I can attach a coffee gift card with it. Using the Secura Glaze to add some details. And then I decide I'm just going to add the steam by doing some stent, bring back the steamy cup stenciling and add that. Close ups of all the projects are going to come. Be sure to tell me which one's your favorite. Until next time, go get creative.